Hello again, I'm Henry T. Welcome to the show that's all about inspiration. And today, one of the most inspirational people that I'm around a lot. And believe me, this guy, he walks the streets of New Mexico inspiring people. That's all he knows, how to make people feel better. And I think that's the way he's dedicated his life. Priorities, great, great dad, great husband, great community leader, total professional in his work as a State Farm agent, and he's the director, the president of the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame. Marty Seitz is with us today. Marty, what a pleasure. How are you? How's it going, Henry? You know, every time I think about you, I smile because oh, I, I think, so. <laughs> how can this guy manage his time as well as you do? You do so many things and every one of them you do so well. What is the secret? You know, I have no idea. I think the good Lord has blessed me. And, you know, as long as we have 24 hours, I'm going to try to maximize it. And, you know, I don't know sometimes. I just, it just happens. And, you know, but uh, um, I definitely work hard to, to make it happen. You know, there are so many priorities that are literally priorities that you set on your plate. Number one, managing a family, loving them, taking care of them being a great husband and being a parent to three great athletes in your family. You were one, you were a coach, and you and your wife have three athletes. The calendar is full of activity. Let's start there. How do you do that? I don't know. Like I said, uh, we always try to be there for our kids. You know, I'm blessed with a great wife and, you know, and, and uh, we make our kids our priority. Um, we've been real fortunate that they have been involved in athletics and uh, we try to be a good parent and support them and uh, encourage them and you know me being a coach in basketball you know I, I give them my advice and you know but more importantly I, I just want to support them you know I just talked to Ke uh, Kevin he's headed out they were driving out to Dallas to catch a plane to go to Florida and play three games uh, he plays for Eastern New Mexico and uh, I tell them, enjoy the ride, enjoy the experience, and have fun, and, and shoot the ball, you know, until the coach tells you not to shoot it, and, you know, and, and he laughs, and, you know, and, you know, and then except uh, Megan's playing volleyball over at Hope, and, and playing club over with the ARVC club, and uh, and then Kenny used to play club basketball and, and football, and, and went on and played at Trinity, so, you know, we just try to be there, you know, I try to be there as supportive parents, and, uh, um, and not to get involved with the coaches like most parents do today. Just, you know, just, I think uh, parents just need to be there and encourage and and, uh, and hopefully they do the right things. Uh, take care of their schoolwork is priority in our house. You know, no, no, no schoolwork prior, uh, taken care of, uh, no sports. So, you know, and I've never had to worry about it. I think that the competition uh, among them to do well at school and athletics uh, is, is among them three. Plus my, my, uh, my nephews and nieces, they all have been athletes. Uh, real proud of uh, Lauren Wilmert, uh, my niece over at Volcano Vista. She'll be playing softball at UNM next year and, uh, you know, good student athlete. Uh, we got to recognize her at our volleyball banquet on Sunday as not only an all academic team, but also an all Metro player. So, so our whole family, I, I said, my father died when he was 51 and, and he really stressed uh, academics and he was a big sports guy. And so you know, I think he'd be proud of our, my, all my brothers and sisters and my nephews and, and nieces. You know, when I look at the things you do in our community today, you got behind the athletes, the Metro Athletes Association, and you provided most of the work, got State Farm very involved in honoring athletes in football and basketball and volleyball, etc. So many athletes were honored by State Farm. And I would have to say, you were the catalyst for most of that work. And you're getting all of your executive people from State Farm involved. And then look at the thousands of athletes that got awards and recognition because of State Farm, led by your efforts. It's an amazing story. Oh, it's been a, a great journey, Henry. And actually, you're probably the the one that got it kick-started. You know, I look back, and I think it was 1996. Uh, uh, we were real fortunate uh, uh, that you came in the, in, into play. We had just got, come uh, a few weeks prior to that uh, to a management meeting. I was in management at the time with, with State Farm and my boss, Dennis Hodges. 
uh, and I had attended the meeting, and, and their goal was to get involved in high school uh, somehow. And uh, Dennis, a former UNM Lobo basketball assistant coach and UNLV coach, so, and then I coached at Cibola. So basketball, we had some good conversations plus the insurance talk. But uh, you happened to come one uh, day in September, I think in 96, and said, uh, do you guys want to sponsor uh, high school sp basketball or sports, and then I looked at Henry, uh, looked at Dennis, and uh, we asked you how much, and you gave us a price, and that that was our our tie into high school uh, that, the, that that the upper management wanted us to get into, and and then we just started joking around, and I said nobody does the the player of the week, and so we do it on let's do it on the radio, and uh, and then toward the end nobody does the player of the year, and so we did a, a little luncheon uh, salesman. Uh, we had a sales. Uh, uh, meeting in, in March and it was perfect timing so in that uh, luncheon uh, during that sales meeting we presented our first player of the year and senior student athlete I think uh, Victor Baca uh, Ron Garcia I mean Victor Vic Garcia Ron Garcia's son was our first senior student athlete if I can remember and Shane Mason and was our first basketball and um, uh, Hernandez uh, she went uh, on to play at uh, Notre Dame and so that kind of uh, from that luncheon uh, things took off uh, and State Farm, uh, one of the State Farm vice presidents uh, loved the idea and ended up being the corporate sponsor in Arizona for football and basketball and and we were the ones that kind of started. Uh, we said, hey, you know, what about us? And we became the first corporate sponsor for the New Mexico Activity Association. They had never had a title sponsor and, and we were the, uh, there for nine years and I always feel that, uh, you know, those uh, early years because of what success we, we had and the hard work we put uh, you know, just led to more, more and more things, and and so led to the banquet. So uh, I think that being Dennis Hodges, uh, he was a great leader, uh, and I we wanted to recognize the positive things our youth do. Uh, we, uh, I think me personally was sick and tired of seeing the news and seeing all the gang involvement, all the negative stuff we hear about our kids. And there's a lot of kids that do a lot of positive things. And, and if you were there the other night, uh, there was about 450, 500 people. And, and we gave out like 200 and some awards, 83 all academic seniors in, in, the, in volleyball. Uh, these are 3.5 or better. You know, I look at Libby Fidel from Albuquerque Academy and all around senior student athlete, uh, 4.3 and doing the things she's doing on the court. And, and in the in her school and community, um, those are the people that we want to you know highlight and recognize. And like I said you you were you were part of that uh, that journey, and uh, and I thank you for that. Why do you appreciate athletics, the youth, and the coaches and the teachers as much as you do? I think athletics teaches you the uh, a lot about life. You know, working with other teammates, winning and losing. You know, uh, I I told this to somebody the other day. Uh, I remember every coach from Little League uh, to high school. Uh, I can't say I remember every teacher. And uh, um, and you talk to athletes and they'll tell you who their Little League coach was, their Pee Wee coach. And, you know, um, just you learn a lot uh, uh, during athletics. And uh, um, and I think you learn, you know, I, you know, I wanted the kids, especially running the Danny Granger AU Club, that, to believe that they could play at the next level. You know, I think a lot of our kids and a lot of people don't believe they can do things. You know, I sat down with a client today um, in the late 50s and 60s and said, Marty, you'd like to travel a lot. You know, we, we can't do those things. And, and within about 30 minutes, I gave them some ideas on how to do it. And they looked at each other, hey, we can do this, honey. We can go watch the Colorado Rockies play or the Phoenix Car I mean, Arizona Cardinals play. You know, I said, you know, we can do these things. And uh, I look at the Danny Granger Club. Uh, we got 14 kids, I think, uh, playing D1, Division One basketball. I think a total of 30 kids playing college basketball because they played in it. Now, a handful of the kids would, like Bryce Alford and Cullen Neal would have played whether they in our club or not. But the majority of these kids, uh, they wouldn't have. Uh, they might have played maybe, maybe. There's a lot of maybes. But because of that, they now believe they could play at those levels. And, and uh, so seeing kids, you know, start when they're young and, and, and fulfill their dreams and goals is, is a real personal satisfaction for me. You know, uh, the word inspiration is what makes up this show. You're inspired all of the time. You see that word out there with your colleagues in the coaching realm. You see kids get inspired. What's your message to potential athletes out there, parents who see their youngsters maybe playing the TV games too much? How do you inspire out of your heart today a message to the young parents 
How did they get their kids up and go accomplish? You know, I don't know if we can, you know, uh, say anything magical to him, Henry. I just think you just got to be there for them and, and, uh, and just be there for whatever they want to do. Um, I look at my son, Kenny was a probably, you know, I was a pretty intense coach and I, I wanted those kids to, to work hard and, and want to win. In fact, my niece, uh, I, uh, yesterday we were talking about, it, she says, uncle, you were really hard. You were mean at us. And I said, but by the time you got to high school, Ashley, uh, uh, you were pretty tough. So anything the coaches yelled at you, you'd already been there. And, uh, she goes, yeah, you, know, you always made us work hard and, and believe that we could do it. And I look at my son, Kenny, you know, he was a good athlete, not a terrific athlete. He loved football. He's one of those kids that just loved the sport and went to Trinity university and for three years, never played. Uh, you know, he got hurt and I said, Kenny, you're senior, you're going to senior. Why are you going? He says, cause I want to. And, and I love playing all my friends are there. And, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, five nine, two two sixty lineman. I mean, give me a break. He, you know, he's not a you know, typical foot, college football player, but he got to play, and uh, he got you know, and he, and he had the satisfaction of fulfilling four years of playing uh, at that level and practicing, and but more importantly, he, he became uh, made a lot of good friends along the way, and and so you know, all we did was support them. So whatever they do, uh, I think just be there to support them, encourage them, you know, and if you have the resources, you know, put them in places where they can get better. Um, but, you know, there's nothing more valuable than saying I love you to, to your kids and, um, and, and, and just being there for them. Amazing story. The president of the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame, what a huge responsibility. You're creative, you're hardworking. You dazzle me already by the ideas you have for the future, present and future. Under your guidance and leadership, this organization's gonna grow leaps and bounds. What's your philosophy and literally your feelings about what those or this organization means? Well, first of all, Henry, anything I try to do, I, I try, just like my agency, um, we work really hard. Um, and through a lot of hard effort, uh, we want to be able to run a world-class or first-class operation. You know, we want to be the best we possibly can. So anything I try to get involved in, like Albuquerque Youth Basketball League, AYBL, I wanted it to be bigger and better and a more positive experience. And I think when I left it, I left it better than when I took over. And, and, and that's the same thing with the Sports Hall of Fame. I hope I... You know, uh, through the hard work, uh, not only myself, but you know, we have 19, uh, you know, 20 board members that work really hard and devote a lot of time and effort at no cost. We don't have any paid staff. Uh, and so we do everything for the love of, of, of sports and in, in athletics and, and we put in countless hours. And so hopefully I could provide a vision of, uh, of what's possible. And sometimes I don't even know what's possible, but I know it's being done somewhere. So if it's done somewhere, we can do it too. And maybe we could do it better and, and, and uh, think out of the box. And, and, and maybe I challenge some of the board members. And sometimes I, I know some of the board members think I'm crazy. Uh, but, you know, because of their buy-in and what we've done, we've made it better. And it's the we part. We, you know, if we do it together, uh, we can make a huge impact in our state, uh, not only athletics, but also uh, in our youth of our community. And one of the things we're trying to do this year is uh, doing an induction weekend. We've never, we just always have done for 42 years, uh, since 1973, a banquet. You know, a nice first class, you know, to me, the the top the top uh, sports banquet in the state. Uh, it's I used to call it the Cadillac or Lamborghini of all the banquets. I mean, it's 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 uh, you know I got to wear a tux and so do you. And I don't wear a tux uh, to anything, and but this I do. And um, you know, but I think there was I could see there was more. And since we since 2008, when we started to go outside of Albuquerque, because up in 2008 we were just the Albuquerque Sports Hall of Fame. Um, so. Uh, we, we now find out there's a lot of people that are not being recognized. And so for the last two years, uh, one of my major goals was to expand the number of inductees. Uh, up until two years ago, our bylaws only allowed us to do four a year. And for 
what, uh, four or five years, we, we did two outside of Albuquerque and two inside of Albuquerque. And, and so there's a lot, you know, if you look now, we have over 52 uh, candidates on our homepage. Uh, and there's probably about 15, 20 people uh, in addition to that are not in there. So there's a lot of great people that have impacted uh, in athletics, in, either in, as an athlete, a coach, or a mini, uh, you know, administrator, or, or some other capacity that uh, haven't been recognized. And, and uh, like I told somebody uh, last night, um, why so many? Um, I said, I'd, I'd rather get them in here before they die. You know, I look at the, uh, uh, Henry Sanchez, who died a month before his induction. I looked at Rocky Roy, who died a few weeks before his induction this year. And, and uh, I, don't want, I want these people to understand they're Hall of Famers and, and uh, be able to, to be there uh, and hopefully uh, uh, get the recognition for uh, the impact they made on others. Uh, and I think that's, uh, for me as a sports junkie, um, Sports Hall of Fame is kind of the ultimate. Amen. You know, we have a great city. So many things going on. Um, how do you see our city and its growth in the future? You have a conceptual skill. And I ask, the, I ask that question because your vision is incomparable. What do you see for our great city? You know, I don't know about it, what I see for the great city. I, I just think... Uh, uh, Albuquerque is a great place to live. I've had opportunities to move uh, through State Farm, but you know I've lived here all my life. Uh, was born here and and plan to die here. And uh, you know, I just it's just a uh, uh, I just enjoy living here. It's a comfortable place to live. Uh, you know, despite some of the negative things we have, uh, there's a lot of great people here. And just uh, um, I think people here in, in Albuquerque uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, it's a struggle to get them to believe that they can do things. Uh, I know it was a struggle for me, uh, especially early in my State Farm career, to believe that I could actually do and compete and be, you know, uh, be around people. I mean, like I said, I owe it a lot to you. I, I never would be on a show like this uh, 20 years ago. I was pretty introverted. Uh, people wouldn't probably realize that today, but, you know, uh, it's just believing that you can do things. And, um, uh you know, there's nothing I do that's magical, Henry. I, I grew up from two hardworking parents, uh, taught us good values to work hard, you know, be honest, uh, and do the little things. Uh, he used to drive me up the walls with my dad. He was a truck driver, but he used to do side jobs, and it was those little things. He goes, everything's got to be perfect. And, and so, um, but, you know, b believing that you can do things, and, and uh, uh, I think that's been my biggest thing is we can do things if we if if we think about it talk about it write it down and start sharing it with others and and uh you know i i said my goal this year is to raise a hundred thousand dollars for scholarships and and charities and i know everybody in the board thinks i'm crazy but it's possible and uh and and hopefully we can make it happen and if we don't uh it's been a, you know uh, it's we'll have whatever if we have a thousand bucks it'll be a thousand bucks more than we ever did before but if we hit the hundred thousand um you know, uh, it'll be cool. Uh, the date of your your banquet, and what can the public do to be there in force? Well, first of all, we're going to introduce uh, eight uh, uh, unbelievably uh, outstanding uh, individuals that have made a huge impact in athletics. Uh, we'll do that uh, this Saturday at 9.30. I can't divulge who the eight people are, Henry, not even to you. Um, and it'll be over at the convention center. Uh, after that, we'll take the, the inductees over to the New Mexico Bowl. And, and thanks to Jeff Simbietta, uh, during the first quarter, I believe we're going to introduce him to the, uh, uh, also to, to the people at the football game. And then we're working really hard to hopefully introduce them at the basketball game later that night. Um, and in January, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll select our annual award winners. Um, uh, and, and the people, other people we're going to be honoring, uh, such as Holly Holm, uh, Mike uh, Winklejohn, and Greg Jackson will be honored. Uh, and the event will be, again, it's an, uh, we call it the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame Induction Celebration Weekend, and it'll be April 1st. Uh, Friday, we'll open up with a three-hour event over at the convention center, open to the public. They can come and get uh, photos and autographs from current and past inductees. We're trying to bring some of the 
uh, uh, famous uh, past inductees. Uh, we're trying real hard to bring somebody like a Brian Erlacher, uh, maybe a Nancy Lopez back uh, to mingle with the, the current and past inductees, annual award winners. So uh, we've never done that before. You know, this gives uh, you know the general public a chance. Uh, maybe they can't afford uh, a ticket to the banquet, but they can now come and, and get an autograph and a picture with them. And, and uh, the, the convention center, Jose Garcia down there, uh, the general uh, manager down there has been awesome to work with. Um, so we'll have that event uh, Saturday morning over at Twin Warriors. We'll have our charity golf tournament. And again, our goal is to raise some money for charities. Uh, one of them will be ALS. Uh, you know, our good friend Gene Pino uh, uh, is, you know, has been uh, fighting that battle with ALS. And then also uh, scholarships uh, for our in-state athletes. And then uh, Sunday night, we will have our induction banquet. Uh, and we're hoping, uh, my hope and goal is this will be the biggest one we've ever had. And, uh, and again, I know everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I think the public comes, uh, they're gonna get some inspiration. You talk about inspiration. I think we're gonna have eight, eight people in there that are gonna inspire us uh, like we've never done before. Wow. Well, the phrase mover and shaker, you've revolutionized that in the most positive way. You're far more than a mover and shaker. And what a proud moment it is for me to have you in my company today, just to say I'm so happy. Marty Seitz is my friend, and ladies and gentlemen, he's your friend as well. And he's working for us, and especially our children, all of the time. Thank you, Marty Seitz. Thank you, Henry. Wow. What a pleasure. You stay there. we got a little bit more inspiration to give you today on KZQ Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. play the game of golf I get inspired I get motivated I love the game of golf I love watching the Masters the PGA the British Open and all those big events on television today I want you to meet a young man who aspires to play in those big events someday his name is Marcus Molina born and raised in Albuquerque and he's that close to playing in his favorite game in that big big stage and Marcus, what a pleasure to have you with Henry T. today. How are you? Doing great, Henry. Thanks for having mm. me here. You know, I, I tell everybody that Marcus Molina is going to be the next Lee Trevino coming right out of Albuquerque because you're that good and you're that close. What do I mean when I tell the audience you're that close? Well, I started playing golf at a young age, you know, and uh, 
practice a lot. You know, practice makes perfect, just like anything, whether you're shooting free throws, whether you're, you're hitting baseballs in the batting cage, but it just takes time, it takes dedication. And, and luckily, I got introduced to the game of golf at an early age, and I continued to move forward with it. Have fun with it, that's number one, first and foremost, is having fun with the game. And, and, and two, the accolades come later, you know, and, and, and uh, but up to this point, you know, I, I want to get there, I'm determined, and uh, I'm definitely not done playing golf yet, you know. I'm still getting used to myself, physical changes within the body, and, uh, and also mentally, because that's one big part of the game of golf, that you have to have both. You have to have the physical and the mental aspect of it, and uh, timing is everything, it really is. You know, growing up, you have parental guidance. You play high school golf, you play college golf, you win a lot of tournaments, and you need a, a strong mom and dad influence to, to keep guiding you and say, don't quit, you have what it takes. Tell me about their side of this story. Absolutely, my parents, you know, obviously, uh, well, I'm an only child. Uh, but my parents, you know, they got my back no matter what. You know, my mom is, you know, I'm, I'm her boy, but my dad never forced me to doing anything. You know, as a young kid, I, I played everything. I, I, was, I felt I was a pretty good baseball player. My dad was a collegiate baseball player himself, so I kind of wanted to follow his footsteps. Um, I played AAU basketball. Um, obviously, going and graduated from St. Pius, I was kind of in the feeding team to go and play ball for Pius. Um, however, when I got to Pius, I just decided to to put the balls down and, and stick with the golf clubs. And, uh, and why I did that, you know, I have no idea, but I just felt that that was my, mainly because maybe I was winning, okay? And that's what kind of mm -hmm. took me to the golf side and said, I just want to stick on this, you know? And this is obviously, golf's a game that you can play forever. You know, it really is, knock on wood, but, but I, you know, for instance, I give, you know, lessons to all the people that, you know, 85, 90 years old, honestly. And it's amazing for me, one, for them to come to me and ask me to help them. But two, just being able to physically do it. Um, it's an amazing thing. That's, what, that's what's so great about the game of golf. You have to believe in yourself in this game of golf. If you don't believe in yourself, wow, the battle's gone. Absolutely. Man, what a pleasure to have you on the show today and capsulize in the future how you break down how to get there and what we will see of your progress in the near and far future. Sure, but well, this coming summer I am going to be playing in the, I'm going to start out with the Socorro Open out in Socorro, you know, it's a, uh, but you know, there's some money to be made, but it's more again, getting comfortable, getting started. Uh, San Juan Open, New Mexico Open. Uh, Grand Junction, so it was about six or seven tournaments. So I'm gonna play in that. Here come the end of the year, if I do well, you know, and I'm confidently sound, well, let's go to Q School, you know, and, and I have no problem doing that. I did the Canadian Tour Qualifying School as soon as I graduated from Western back in 08. Uh, fell a little short, but it was a great experience, you know, and uh, that's an option there too, Canadian, Canadian uh, School. And uh, I've always wanted to, one, play golf competitively, professionally, and two, travel and see new things, you know, and, and I'm very fortunate that I've been exposed and uh, been able to play this wonderful sport and uh, really take it to another level. Marcus Molina, ladies and gentlemen, the next Lee Trevino. You got it. I'm in your corner all the way. Keep us abreast of your progress and we'll have you on again in the near future. You got it, Henry. Thanks for Marcus, having me here. Marcus, what a pleasure. Now that's inspiration, ladies and gentlemen. Got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907 4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T, 8 o'clock on KZQ, channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been provided in part by A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I am the owner of A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. I am an avid listener of Channel 32, and this is our brand, A&D Signature Series. A&D also provides repairs, new installations, evaporative to refrigerated conversions, and other services. A&D Heating and Air Conditioning, 505-489-9342. Thanks for supporting family programming. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Marty Sice, a local State Farm Insurance agent. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah! I love it here. 
We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. Marty Size, 345 3431. Thank you for supporting family programming.